In this question, we're going to solve the equation 3 cosec theta equals 2 tan theta in the region 0 to 2 pi. So the first thing we're going to do is take cosec theta and tan theta and write them in terms of sine and cos. So cosec theta is 1 over sine theta. So I can write this left-hand side as 3 over sine theta. On the right-hand side, tan theta can be written as sine over cos. So we can write that as 2 sine theta over cos theta. From here, I'm going to clear the fractions. So I'm going to multiply up here by sine theta, and I'm going to multiply up by cos theta. That's going to give me 3 cos theta equals 2 sine squared theta, because I've got sine theta multiplied by sine theta. From here, I've got cos theta and sine squared theta. I need to get this equation in terms of either sine or cos. In order to get rid of one of these, I can use the identity sine squared plus cos squared equals 1. And that allows me to write sine squared in terms of cos squared. So we'll leave the left-hand side as 3 cos theta. And we'll write sine squared theta as 1 minus cos squared theta. Make sure you put it in a bracket. So I've got two lots of 1 minus cos squared theta. And now I've got a quadratic that's all in terms of cos theta. So all I need to do is expand and rearrange and then get one side equal to zero. So we'll leave the left-hand side again as 3 cos theta. The right-hand side becomes 2 minus 2 cos squared theta. From here, I'm going to take all of the terms over to the left-hand side. So let's factorise this quadratic. I'm going to put 2 cos theta to begin with in both brackets. And I'm going to look for two numbers that multiply to make 2 times minus 2, which is minus 4, and add to make 3. In this case, I'm going to use positive 4 and negative 1. But if I multiply out this, that would give me 4 cos squared. So I've got to pull out a factor of 2. I can do that from this bracket by dividing it by 2. I can change it to cos theta plus 2. Now that I've got it factorised, I can split it into two equations to solve. I'm going to start with this one here. I'm going to write cos theta equals negative 2. So the range of cos theta is minus 1 to 1. So this equation here has no solutions. Let's look at the second equation we've got to solve. We've got 2 cos theta minus 1 equals 0, which means that cos theta would equal 1 half. Doing inverse cos of 1 half in radians would give us pi over 3 for the principal solution. To get a second solution, we take the first solution and subtract it from 2 pi, and that gives us 5 pi over 3 for our second solution. So our two solutions to this equation are pi over 3 and 5 pi over 3. In this example, we're solving the equation sec x minus cot x equals 0. First thing we're going to do is take the cot x over to the right hand side. That gives us sec x equals cot x. From here, we're going to take sec x and cot x and write them in terms of sine and cos. So sec x is 1 over cos x and cot x is cos x over sine x. Next, we're going to clear the fractions by multiplying up. So we're going to multiply up by cos x on the right. So we get cos squared x. And we're going to multiply up by sine x to the left to get sine x. From here, we want to get this equation in terms of either sine or cos. As we've got cos squared, it makes sense to use the identity cos squared plus sine squared equals 1. So we're going to write cos squared as 1 minus sine squared x. From here, we can take everything over onto the left-hand side. And we have a quadratic to solve. 
This quadratic doesn't factorise, so we'll put it into our calculator to get the two solutions. Remember, we're not solving for x at this point, we're just solving for sine x. So if we do that, we're going to get sine x equals minus 1 plus root 5 over 2. Or sine x equals minus 1 minus root 5 over 2. Now it's helpful to know what these are in terms of decimal approximations because it will help us decide if these equations actually have any solutions. So minus 1 plus root 5 over 2 is approximately 0 0.6. Because that's between minus 1 and 1, this equation will have solutions. But for this one, minus 1 minus root 5 over 2 is approximately minus 1.6. So this equation here will have no solutions. Let's go ahead and solve the other part of the equation now. So if we do inverse sine of minus 1 plus root 5 over 2, we get 0 0.67 to two decimal places. And then if we want a second solution, we just have to subtract that from pi. And that would give us 2.48. So both of these solutions are to two decimal places.